Welcome to the MTD Technical Corner today. I have the privilege to be with Clive Leonard, one of the most technical people that I've had the pleasure to meet and a very good friend. Welcome to the Technical Corner, Clive. Thank you very much, Joe. Great to see you again. Great to see you too. Now, Clive Iemka, you're well renowned for the Iemka products um, and you're specialists in bar feeders at First MTA. Can you firstly give us an overview of the Kid 80, the short bar feeder? Sure. Well, I am, as you're probably aware, or if you're not aware, do a massive range of bar feeders from, from very small bar, very large bar. But we asked IAMCA in the early 90s, from our previous experience, to develop a short bar feeder for the UK market. And in, even in those early days, we recognised quickly that it needed to be a servo bar feeder because of the way the machine tools are being developed. So what are the advantages of a servo bar feeder? So a servo bar feeder basically gives you much more control. It gives you control on your bar feeder lengths, gives you control on your feeding forces, your feeding speeds, and the operator menu is so much easier to use. Easier to use. How easy is it to program? So we have two options. We have a handheld control unit or we have a touch screen. They can both be swapped before or after you buy the bar feeder. It doesn't matter, there's a plug-in. And all you do is set a parameter for your component length or your bar diameter, and you're finished. What is the maximum length of bar that you can load into this? So this particular bar feeder takes 1.6, but that will depend on the spindle length of your machine. Right, and, and why would it be, depend on the spindle length of the machine? Because with short mag magazine bar feeders, the bar is introduced into the machine, and it doesn't support it in the bar feeder. So the lathe is supporting the bar. So there are ways to extend that spindle length through use of liners tubes, but that really is the determining factor of the bar you're going to produce in the machine. Whilst we're on that subject, Clive, can you explain how you would adjust the centre height dependent on the machine tool centre height? Yeah, so our installation, we'll come along, we have already know what lathe it's going on to before, so we'll prep that before it leaves and gets delivered to the customer. The engineer will then put its feet on the bar feeder, adjust that to a fine line with the, with the spindle and bolt it to the floor. Right, now we've got all of the, the, the bar feeders set up onto the machine tool. How accurate and repeatable is the Kid 80? Accuracy you can feed without a stop. That's not, a, not an issue. It's usually around about, depending on your size, your material, your collet system is quite important on that as well. Because you, you have to have a, you can't have a pullback collet chuck system. You have to have a dead length collet chuck system. So it go to 0 0.5. 0 0.5, and can you tell, Tell me about the preload function yeah, and sure. what this means. So on a normal bar change, what will happen is the bar feeder will tell the machine it's got no more bar left. So you're on your last component, the machine will change programs and send a signal to the bar feeder to bar change. Normally, the pusher will come all the way back, it would preload the bar into the channel and it would preload into the machine. The preload function takes all that first part away while you're machining your last component. So therefore, cutting your bar change cycle in half. So effectively, Clive, saving time. Yeah, Pressing saving time. time. Yeah. Now, applications, machine tools, you know, you know, why would somebody look to automate their lathe that hasn't already automated their lathe? And let, let me give an example here. Say, for example, they were just doing billet work, Clive. Okay. Maybe low volume billet work. What argument would there be to automate that fixed dead lathe? Okay, so typically the short bar fitter goes into smaller shops it's because of the space saving feature it has. So. If you have one-offs or small amounts, if you're using the same material, why wouldn't you use it at a bar? You save all that time of cutting the billet, you save all that waste of material where you're gripping on with your jaws, you can make that part from that material and just move straight on. So again, another time-saving yeah. um, and more, more efficient way of working. Correct. Clive, it's been an absolute pleasure. Just want to summarise really, can you give me your opinions on the main USPs of the Kid 80. Yeah, I mean, as I said earlier, I can make a large range of bar feeders, so their build quality is, is second to none. The second big feature of this servo bar feeder is that I can made a decision many years ago to move to a full Siemens platform, which gives the operator a much safer and more stable platform to work with. And this is a big investment. Oh, a massive investment. And does yeah. this work in conjunction with Industry 4.0? Yes, yeah, every bar feed in the range, including the short bar feed, can have Industry 4. What this means, you can get remote service from IAMCA, you can operate the bar feeder from your phone your, or your iPads, you can get alarms at home when the bar feeder stopped. So all of those Industry 4 advantages come with every single bar feeder. 
Clive, thank you very much for the technical overview. You know, most lathes in our industry are automated and it is such an important thing to do now to stay yeah. and remain competitive, to automate um, your lathes. Clive, thank you very much. For more information on the IMCA range of bar feeders, contact First MTA.